Well, one of the questions that I get asked often is why boat builders like slotted screws. Well, in the event that if you need to remove a screw, as I did when I went around and replaced all the planking screws, which were one inch, with the screws that went in to the shear clamp, which were two and a half inches. When you do that, it's much easier to clean the fairing compound out of a slotted screw. Uh, as you can imagine, if you have other places where you need to do, do repairs, where either it was fairing compound over it or it was glued with a bung in there, to, in order to clear that slot, it's really a simple task. In order to clear the slot or to clear a other type of head, like a Phillips head or a square drive or a Robertson uh, or a torque head, they would all be much, much more difficult to try to dig all of that compound out of there and then order to get the screwdriver to purchase in there properly. So that's really the main reason why boat builders like slotted screws. The other reason is that they uh, are much more of an aesthetic looking screw, especially if you're building a boat that has some historic reference to it. So the downside that a lot of people say, well, but slotted heads cam out easily on me, or it slips out and I'm afraid I'm gonna damage the surface that I'm working on. Well, slotted screws, the important thing with a slotted screw is that the screwdriver fits in there perfectly. Now I've got two screwdrivers here that appear to be pretty much the same. But if I take this one and I put it in that slot, hopefully you can see that that wiggles around in there quite a bit and easily slides in and out. So the real key here is to having a screwdriver that fits the slot. And what I mean by that is that it must go all the way in and fill the bottom of the point. So if I put this screwdriver in there, you can see that it doesn't wiggle around at all and it's in there very tightly. So you can see how that fits in there nice and tight. So that's really the key to putting in slotted screws is having the proper screwdriver head. Uh, and that is also, I have that on my Yankee screwdriver here that many of you have seen me using. And I really like this screwdriver. Uh, one of the nice things, especially when you're putting a lot of screws in, like in a deck like this, it makes the work go pretty quick. So I'm going to finish getting this deck all fastened down, and then we're going to get those chain plates made for this back part here, and we'll get these the rest of the fore deck fastened down. And in addition to that, I will then come by with some fairing compound and get all these screw heads filled and make sure that the deck, both fore and aft, are all fared out and ready for that canvas. So hopefully we'll get all of that done in this episode of The Art of Boat Building. Well, that's it for all the screws in the fore deck. Now we need to uh, make those chain plates that come back here. If you'll remember, they come out here at station eight. So let's go to the plans and see how to build those. So over here at the plans, we can see how we need to make those chain plates. So you can see here in this drawing here, where in the uh, plan view, we can see this is where the chain plate comes out of the deck, and this is what the chain plate looks like. Now, if you can see that the width of the chain plate is here in a dashed line, and it comes down part way, and then there's another piece that goes over the top of that. And in more detail over here, you can see that there's a cross section of the chain plate. So you can see that the chain plate needs to be made out of 1 8 inch by 1 and 8 inch bronze. And then that it is fastened through the hull of the boat. 
and that is covered up with a piece of 3 16 by 1 and an eighth inch oak that starts up here at the shear and goes all the way down. You can see right here is where the bronze stops. So what we need to do is one, fabricate this piece of bronze here, and then also we need to have a piece of oak that is bent that will fit over the top of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the bronze and drill the chain plate hole in the top. Now that I've got the bronze pieces for the chain plates made and fitted, uh, next I need to do is make that piece of oak that goes over the top of it. So I've got a piece here that I've cut to the dimensions that it's called for in the plans. And you can see it's a, it's a pretty stout piece of timber. And I'm pretty sure that I wouldn't be able to, to force that in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steam bend it and get a general shape of what that should be in there. And the way I'm going to determine that is if I set this along the hull here and I measure at the top, that's about three quarters and that's about three quarters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to steam it in a bag and put a little three quarter inch block on each corner 
and then clamp it down to my bench to get that general shape. Well, I'm all set up here with my wallpaper steamer to get those pieces of oak steamed. So as you can see here, uh, I've got the blanks up on a incline so that when it condensates, it'll run down into this blue tub. So we'll get that plugged in and get started. And in the meantime, we'll start fairing out that aft deck. They seem to have come out pretty good, so we'll see how well that fits. Before I actually steam these, I cut a little notch in there so that the bronze could lay flush inside of that. Um, you can see here. So what I need to do is to see if I can get this in. That's going to work pretty good. So what I need to do first is there's a couple of little trims, trimming things I need to do here. But <clears throat> what I'm going to do is put the bronze back in here. And I'm going to drill holes through here to the outside of the plank. And then once I get that lined up, I can then put 
this one screw that I already have through there. Um, and then I'll be able to drill from this side through the oak to, in order to get those bolts in there. So that's what I'm going to do next. That's it for the uh, starboard side. So now we'll get the port side done and then we can come back through here and cut these bronze bolts off. Now that I've got all those bolts cut off, I can now put our finished parts of our deck on here. Now what I'm going to do is where it lines up with the chain plate is make a little mark and then I will cut a slot in here that's just a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. Pretty good fit. All right, now we just get it screwed down. it for the four deck. Uh, we can get some fairing compound on there and some primer and we'll get ready for some canvas. After I got the four deck all fastened down, I then went through and covered all the screw heads and seams with fairing compound. Once the fairing compound had set overnight, I then sanded it down and fared out both the aft and four decks. After they got sanded, I then put a good coat of topside primer on both of them. Now that I've got the top decks all primed and sealed, we can start to attach that canvas covering. Well, the way this canvas will go on here, it'll be sealed down, which we'll talk about in a moment, and I'll trim off the edge. And then a small piece of trim will go along to seal the edge of that plywood and then a piece of walnut will go on top here for the tow rail. So this is the detail that the final boat will have. So now let's get talking about how we attach this canvas. All 
I'm going to get started putting the canvas on the aft deck here, uh, mainly because it's going to be a little bit more manageable uh, when I get started um, than the fore deck, which will probably have to be done in two pieces. So typically, uh, a traditional way of attaching canvas would be to use white lead. Uh, now, I've also seen where people have actually used epoxy to put canvas down. But I've got a third method that I kind of figured out uh, probably some 30 years ago. And I had built a little cart to pull behind bicycle when my kids were little. And that cart was just made out of thin quarter inch plywood that I covered with canvas. And the way I sealed that canvas to it was I used a product called Gesso. And Gesso is a sealant that artists use when they prepare a canvas for an oil painting. So what it's designed to do is to fill the fibers of that cotton so that you could put oil paint or acrylic paint or anything like that. Now back when I was art, in art school, I was using some gesso and I didn't clean the lid very well and just screwed it down thinking it was like latex paint or something like that. Well, to my surprise, when I came back, I could not get that lid off. I soaked it in hot water. I tried vice grips and all kinds of things. It is such a tenacious sealer, there was no way I could get that lid back off. So what I found is that this gesso is actually a very good sealant. And also I've used this on sculptures that have been around now for, oh, 25, almost 30 years. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use gesso to adhere and seal the cotton to the decking. Um, so one of the things about gesso is it is a primer that is used to seal the cotton and it will be perfectly acceptable to receive the top side paint. So I'm going to get this cut off to shape and then we'll get started gluing it down. You can see I've got the canvas all laid out here so it covers it nice. And what I'm going to do is fold it back halfway and attach the first half. So I'm going to pour a little bit out here. I'm going to use a notched trowel to spread it. The nice thing about notched trowels is you get an even amount everywhere. Once I get it on there, I'm going to use a squeegee and to really press it down, work that goes through the fibers.
After letting the gesso dry for a day, I've come back now with a utility knife, just running it along the edge to trim that off. If you'd like to see a full 15 minute unedited version of the canvas going down on the aft deck, you can see that on my Patreon account and the link is down in the description. So that's about all we have time for for this episode. Next episode, we'll start working on the floorboards. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on the Art of Boat Building.